Hi and welcome to On Two Wheels. In today's video, I'm going to do another cosmetic modification on my DRC400. I'm going to paint my rims black. We're still in stage 4 lockdown, so that means there's still no riding. So another minor modification that I've been meaning to do on the bike is to paint my rims black. The DRZ rims, though they've not changed since the year 2000, have changed colour in, I think, 2015. So bikes before 2015 had this normal chrome silver rims. And starting from the year 2015, the rims have been black. The black rims look really nice and it doesn't really take that much effort to paint them black. So I have two wheel sets for my bike, one for road and one for dirt. And I've already painted uh, one set black and today I'm going to paint the other set. So before I do anything else, I need to make sure I've got a clean workspace and that I don't get overspray on the car. So this happens to be the wheel that I've already painted black. When I did this about three years ago, I wasn't too sure how long the paint would last on the wheels because the wheels tend to well, get a lot of motion and they may do make contact a fair bit. So I figured I'll use Plasti Dip because Plasti Dip can easily be ripped off if you don't like it or if you change your mind. So the Plasti Dip was a bit more expensive than spray paint. I think it was about $20 a can or $30 a can. And uh, it wasn't supposed to last that long, but the fact that it lasted three years gives me confidence that Plasti Dip is a good choice. But in this case, today I'm going to use spray paint, so I'm going to use a standard rattle can and uh, hopefully that will look nicer and it will last longer as well. Speaking about Plast Dip, you spray Plast Dip the exact same way you would spray any other spray paint. It's just that you need to spray multiple layers just so that it's thick enough to cover the underlying surface and also to make sure that it will come off easily when you try to peel it off. The plastic dip you see here is about three years old and it has a clear coat over it. So it's been protected in a way. And the clear um, plastic dip actually has a bit of a matte finish. And if you look closely, you'll see that it's not a very smooth finish. It's got a bit of a rough or coarse texture to it. So that's something I hope I can avoid by using normal spray paint. So let's get right down to spray paint in the rims. So when I was buying spray paint, I had two options so i first went to super cheap and got their spray paint so because these were rims i went for very basic ones and they were pretty much like three four dollars a can but when i got home it says it's not suitable for automotive use which is quite strange but um, i'm not too sure what i'm supposed to use it for if it was sold at super cheap it's four dollars a can so i might just try out try it out anyway so this is the primer that i'm going to lay on the rims first what primer does is it makes sure that it creates a good bonding surface between the actual metal and the spray paint. So this should be laid down first. Next, we've got the actual spray paint. So I was curious to try out what this looks like. So this is a satin black and I also got the usual gloss black. Before I actually spray on the wheels, I'm going to do a quick comparison to see which looks nicer. I know gloss black is the color that I really want, but satin black is a color that we are considering for our rally tower as well. So this is a good chance to see how, try out this color. And then, yep, I've got the clear coat. So the clear coat is essentially just a transparent spray paint, which just lays another extra shiny layer on top. And I also got another set of cans. So again, this time from Bunnings, I got two cans of squirts. So the difference between the squirts and the Australian export uh, brand is that the squirt has a primer mixed into the paint. So you don't need to layer primer before you do the paint job itself. So I might just try that one too. So price wise, they're all under $10. So it's hard to compare. So let's see how it goes. So right now on the bike, I've got my road wheel on the front and the off-road wheel at the back. So this gives you a quick comparison on what the two wheels look like. So the front wheel has a much nicer and deeper color and a finish, whereas the rear looks very, well, it looks very 2012. So it will be nice to kind of give that, that same black and dark look. So let's start spray painting. So while in lockdown, I got a new front tire as well, a Pirelli MT21. It's a pretty nice and aggressive thread. And um, yeah, looking forward to riding on it. 
So before I spray paint the wheels, I need to make sure that the wheels are clean and have a oil and dust free surface. So I'm going to first wash it with soap and then use a bit of degreaser to make sure the uh, surfaces are perfect. So I'm going to take a quick break and give you an update on my motorcycle wrapping project. If you haven't seen that, I'll post the link to it in the description below. To give you a quick update on how the tank is looking. Now, after one and a half weeks of the vinyl wrap being on the tank, I see that it's become pretty bad. So you see a lot more bubbles forming on the inside of the vinyl. So clearly this isn't very nice and I'm not very happy with it either but I'm not giving up yet. I've got another trick that I have in mind and hopefully I'll be able to make another update video on that. So remember to subscribe to On Two Wheels so that you get a notification when that video is out. So now back to painting the rims. Now that the wheels have been completely washed and dried, I'm going to use some degreaser to take away that final bit of grease and oily residue. Okay, so now the wheels are completely clean, at least they're as clean as they could be. So I'm going to let it dry out and while one wheel dries out, I'm going to start taping up the other. So I'm going to start taping up the wheel. First, I'm going to cover the tire itself. So to get a fine, perfect inner edge or an outer edge, I'm going to use a 12 millimeter masking tape to go along the border between the tire and the wheel. So what I'm now doing is taping off the uh, tire and the spokes so that I don't get any overspray on it. After I've wrapped a couple of spokes, I realized something. Instead of cutting square bits of tape for the spokes, if you cut triangles, you cover pretty much all the essential parts, but also you save a fair bit of tape. Because if you think about it, you need the thickness of the tape only at the base of the spoke. And at the top, it's literally a narrow area. So if you use like a wide triangle at the bottom, you just end up covering the whole spoke with minimal tape. Okay, so the wheel is now completely wrapped. I'm going to use the squirts primer and paint. So it's a two in one and I'm going with the gloss black. If you're in a colder climate, it helps to keep the can dipped in some hot water just so that uh, it comes to a decent temperature. But also make sure to shake the can well to make sure that everything's mixed up inside. So I'm going to share a little trick that I learned. In most cases, when we need to spray paint, what we're going to do is keep the surface or whatever we are painting on a flat ground and start spray painting. But that's going to end up with a lot of paint dripping on the side and you might miss areas. So something you can do, especially with wheels, is this. Take the axle, put that through the half, and rest the wheel on something that lets it rotate freely. So now when I start spraying it, I'm going to get an even spread throughout. So I see that there's a few areas that I've missed out, but I'm not going to spray that again. I'm going to let this dry and then cover those areas in my second coat. Here we have the rear wheel looking really nice. And like I said, the gloss is just amazing. And moving to the front wheel, we notice that again, the paint is in really good condition. I did have a few specks of dust fall on the rims and settle into the wet paint. So I guess there's nothing I can do about it. So today is the next day and I have let the paint dry overnight. 
So in the process of painting, I laid down about three layers of paint. Uh, after the second layer, it was actually pretty good, but I figured that extra layer wouldn't hurt because the rims do go through some pretty rough terrain and they're prone to chipping. And um, there's uh, plenty of paint left over, might as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is apply the clear coat on the rims. What it does is it gives a finer shine. I'm not even sure if it's possible considering how shiny the rims currently are. And then it'll give an extra bit of protection as well. So the process of applying the clear coat is essentially the same thing. After three layers of paint and two layers of clear coat, I think the rims are now ready. So check out the final finish. So now I need, all I need to do is take away the masking tape and the wheels should be ready to go back on the bike. So when I'm taking the masking tape off, I need to be sure and careful that I don't peel off any of the paint or clear coat with it. So just in case, I do it slow and steady. So I have now taken off all the tape and we now have the finished job. Check it out. So that was a quick how-to video on what you can do to make your rims look a lot nicer. And if you already have black rims, it wouldn't hurt to give them a fresh coat of paint as well. So I hope you found this video useful and if you did, don't forget to give it a like. And to follow my other DIY projects on the motorcycle, make sure to subscribe to On Two Wheels. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get the latest notifications. Thank you for watching.